This is part four of the Craftsman 150 Rebuild series. If you haven't seen video number three, click the link at the top of the screen. In part two, we put most of the parts in Simple Green for a 24 hour bath. We're going to be pulling them out, rinsing them off, and then moving them to a citric acid bath to de-rust them. We'll also be disassembling the Jacob's Chuck and a few more things. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First, we're gonna be removing all of the parts from the simple green bath. So I just use a plastic bucket, that blue Napa bucket there. Transfer everything from the simple green to the bucket and then from the bucket over to the sink that you can see on the right hand side of the screen. And we're just going to be rinsing everything off with cold water and scrubbing it down with a wire brush. So any of the parts that had paint on them, that paint has separated from the cast iron, but it's still there. So the wire brush will fully remove it. Occasionally I'll find an area or two where the paint did not separate, but most of the time, you can just hit it with the wire brush and it comes right off. It might be beneficial to have a couple different size of wire brushes because getting into some of those tight areas is challenging. Now that we have all the parts cleaned up, we're going to drain these plastic bins and reclaim the simple green. So the vise that you can see kind of on the right hand side there has a plastic tube on it and that is a siphon. I'm gonna place a uh, piece of two by four under the back end of the bin we're gonna drain. And then we've got a funnel and the strainers. And those are paint strainers. And once we get the siphon going, then we'll clamp down the 
hose so it stays in the bottom of the bin. And then we just drain it out and move it from container to container as each container gets full. So that's how I reclaim my simple green. You can do that probably about six or seven times before you need to replace the simple green. Next, we washed out those plastic bins and so now we're going to put the citric acid in them. Remember I said the citric acid really smells so we're going to do that outdoors. So I'm putting about six shot glasses in each plastic bin. And then we'll fill them with water. Once we get the citric acid mostly dissolved, then we can start putting the parts in. And this bath is going to be an additional 24 hours. And if it went in the simple green, then it's going in this bath. So no panels, nothing with writing on it, no rubber or plastic parts really, and the pulleys. Do not put the pulleys inside the citric acid. And once they're full, we just put the lids on them, lock them down, and let them go for 24 hours. So these are the parts that did not go into the citric acid. And here we are 24 hours later, and we're ready to pull the parts out. And I'm just going to rinse off each part as I pull it out. Be sure you're using cold water, not hot water. If you use hot water, they're just going to rust again. And the parts that are going to get painted, they're going to develop a, a surface coat of rust. It's kind of unavoidable, but... The uh, primer will take care of that when we go to paint them. So, like I said, just rinse them all off. And then the parts that are going to get painted, I want to dry them first because I, I want to minimize as much rust on them as I can. So I'm going to towel dry them as best as possible. I wouldn't recommend using compressed air or anything like that. I think that's going to increase the likelihood that they're going to develop more rust. Now all these parts that aren't getting painted are just going to go in a plastic bin and they're going to get sprayed down with WD-40. And the WD-40 is not a long-term solution. It's just to keep them from getting rusted. Most of these parts are going to be hit with a wire wheel or polished uh, in a later video. So we're just kind of putting them in the freezer, if you will, for the time being. 
Next, we're going to go ahead and remove those roll pins that hold the uh, motor mount bracket bars on the bracket or rods on the bracket. So they're just roll pins, so all you need is a uh, punch and a hammer, and you can punch them right out. Remember, I didn't want to mess with them before because they were really rusty, but now that we've de-rusted them, they come right out, no problem. And there's the roll pin. And this one looked a little bent on the bracket, so I'm going to kind of bend it back in place. And then I remembered that, hey, we're videoing this, so let's put it on the other side of the vise so we can see what the heck you're doing. But... Even moving it over there, you really can't see. So, sorry about that. So the rods and the roll pins will get WD-40 on them, but the plate itself is not going to get any WD-40 on it because we're going to paint it. So now we're going to disassemble the Jacob's Chuck. So I've actually got one of these collars, but um, all you need is a piece of pipe or a coupler that's the proper inside diameter to fit the chuck. And when you do this, you want to make sure that the, the jaws protrude from the base of the chuck by about a half an inch, maybe a little, little bit shy of a half an inch. If they're all the way retracted inside the chuck and you do this, you will break off the teeth on the back end of those jaws. So, and I've got the jaws actually sitting where we're not applying pressure to the jaws. We're applying pressure to the body of the chuck. So that got us started as far as disassembly. And now I use another coupler that I got from Home Depot and a socket. And if you don't have an arbor press, this is probably the best way to, to do this if you've got a large vise. And this is how I did it for a long time before I had an arbor press. So we can just put it right there in the vise. And make sure everything's lined up and crank it down. And there we go. Now, I should have done this over the table instead of trying to keep it where you can see it. Because as soon as I get that sleeve off, the split ring fell. No big deal. But if you look at that split ring, it'll look like it's broken. And it actually is broken. It was a solid piece that they break in half. And that's the only way to get it made to go inside there. And the jaws are giving me a little bit of trouble. So I'm just going to use a punch and a small hammer and tap them out one at a time.
So I've got a link in my favorites, I believe, for uh, disassembly video of the Jacob's Chuck, but there is a way to tell which jaw is which, and the chucks are actually numbered where the jaws go. A lot of people say they aren't, but I have yet to come across one that's not marked. So when we go to assemble this, I'll tell you all of that information, or you can just do a search on YouTube for assembling a Jacob's Chuck. So these jaws actually look pretty good. But we're going to polish them up and clean them up. And this chuck is going to look brand new when we're done with it. So those are the parts. You've got the sleeve, the body, the split ring, and then the three jaws. So there was grease on the inside of this thing, even though it's gone through a simple green bath and a de-rusting procedure. So we're going to simple green it and de-rust it again now that we've got it all apart. So it'll soak for 24 hours in the simple green. We'll pull it out, rinse it off, and then soak it in the citric acid. And the reason why we didn't do this when we first disassembled the drill press is because this chuck was really rusty. Like it wouldn't even turn really well. So uh, getting it apart would have been more difficult at that time. So we knocked out a lot of the rust and a lot of the grease that was on it just by doing the first two soaks that we did. And now we'll go rinse these parts off. And after we've got everything rinsed off, we're going to mix up some citric acid. Use a shot or two. And then hit it with cold water. And mix up the solution. And we'll just drop the parts in there. There's my dog. And then we'll set this outside because it's going to stink up the basement if we leave it indoors. Okay, so if you recall, these two machine screws were broken off inside the head casting. You can see the remainder of them still in the wall of the head casting. And I thought the heads for these screws were completely gone. But after we got everything cleaned up, yeah, they do have heads still on them. You can see that flat tip head in there just barely. So we're going to try to remove them. And if we can get them out, then that's going to save us a ton of work. If we have to drill them out, it can get kind of challenging. And the 
notch for the flat tip is got a lot of corrosion on it. So I wasn't sure whether or not the screwdriver would even get a bite on it. But I was able to get it in there and it's definitely turning the screw. I'm feeling the back end of the screw with my other hand. And I can feel it going or coming out of the uh, head casting. So But I had demagnetized this screwdriver for a different project, so I'm going to have to remagnetize it. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one. They're awesome. You can magnetize or demagnetize your screwdriver. And it is a godsend when you've got something like this that you want to get that screw to just come straight up with. There it is. So we're halfway there. And I'm just making sure that there's no debris left in there and that I can actually see through that hole. And I can see my glove, so we're good to go. There's still some crud down in there I want to get out. And then... We'll do the other side. This one did not want to play as nicely, but I did get a bite on it and got it to start working out. So I think we're we're good to go. I don't know why Craftsman chose such small screws for this. Uh, you know, they, they really should have utilized a quarter inch size screw that had a coarser thread. Luckily, I was able to get out this screw as well. And so we are ready to go to the next video. And that will finish this video. If you found it helpful or enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And video number five coming soon. So thanks and I will see you next time.